90% of guitar players worldwide suffer from bad timing. This leads to embarrassing moments in the studio. And to very angry bandmates. But this doesn't have to be you. There's an easy way of overcoming these frustrations once and for all. Welcome back my friends. I want to show you three exercises today that will make a huge difference with your timing and rhythm guitar skills. We will cover the three absolutely most important topics together in just one video. Tightly switching between different rhythms and picking patterns in a fluid and effortless way. Fully unlocking your wrist motion so that you can play tight and relaxed at any speed you desire. And working with odd note grouping so that you can infuse your riffs and licks with style and creativity. So shred over that like button if you're as hyped about this as I am and let's do this. So the first topic on today's agenda is already extremely important. As a tight and reliable rhythm guitar player, you want to be able to switch between different note values without dragging or rushing right after those transitions. And you also want to be able to switch between different picking techniques and tempos without any major problems or inconsistencies. So for today's first exercise, you will switch between eighth notes played with downstrokes and eighth note triplets played with alternate picking. For the first group of notes, the eighth notes with downstrokes, your picking hand will be resting on the bridge so that you can switch between open notes and palm muting. And for the second faster group, you will slightly lift your hand and switch to your strumming technique so that you can easily play the dead notes in between. Here's how this first exercise looks like. It's really difficult not to rush as soon as you play those eighth note triplets and then to drag when you switch back to the eighth notes. And of course, it's also tricky to switch between the picking motion and the strumming motion. Quite a lot to keep in mind, so this is an awesome timing and rhythm exercise that you should definitely work on each day. Make sure to download all the really helpful practice files I made especially for you on Patreon. I always make downloadable exercise video play alongs, PDF tabs, backing tracks, guitar profiles, and even full online courses for our awesome community of over 4,000 dedicated players over there. So join us today, the link is in the description and in the first comment below. Alright, the second exercise is all about rhythmic displacement and odd note groupings. With this one I'd like to show you that you don't necessarily need odd meters like 7, 8 or 5, 4 to create complex and intriguing riffs. You can also do it in good old 4, 4. And here's an awesome example exercise that features this system that I want to show you. With this one I was playing groups of 5 eighth notes in a 4-4 four, four time signature. Please remember those are not quintuplets, I'm still just playing regular old eighth notes here. But by rhythmically dividing them into groups of 5 instead of your usual groups of 2 or 4, the accents created by that keep drifting away from the beat until the pattern finally repeats after 5 measures. And to make all this even crazier, I didn't just repeat the riff of the five measures, I only played the accents on the A and D strings without playing the downstrokes on the low open E string in between. So this sounds really cool and kind of crazy played against that straight rock beat and it's actually quite difficult to really nail those odd accents in time. My personal trick concerning that is just counting the eighth notes in my head in groups of five and I'm just playing the first and the third note. But since the tempo is kind of fast, I can't just count in numbers anymore. One, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's when I like to use conical inspired phrases like taka di mi ti for groups of five. Taka di mi ti, 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 taka di mi ti. Conical is the art of performing percussion syllables vocally in Indian music. And you should really look into this if you're searching for a better system of counting than one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Of course I made sure to create a helpful sheet for all patrons with the most common phrases. That way you can learn to start counting like this with groups of 2, 3, 4 and 5. 
So in case this second exercise is a bit too rhythmically challenging and confusing for you at the moment, you can also start exploring odd note grouping by combining groups of two or three eighth notes in just one 4-4 measure. Since you just have eight eighth notes available in one 4-4 measure, you end up with the following possibilities. 2, 3, 3, 3, 2, 3 and 3, 3, 2. So for the next more basic exercise I'm just playing the low open E string and I'm accenting all first notes of every single group by playing E one octave higher on the 12th fret. So that's a bit easier, but you still end up with tons of awesome creative possibilities for your riffs and licks. And the last thing you can do before we move to the final and most challenging exercise of this video is experimenting with just playing a repeating group of three eighth notes. So you're not just limiting yourself to one measure anymore. You're just playing that group of three over and over again until the full pattern lands on the one again after three measures. I hope this helps with getting a feeling for odd note grouping and rhythmic displacement at the beginning. Trust me, it really pays off to work on this, not just for your timing and rhythm skills, but also to fuel your creativity when it comes to writing progressive and odd riffs and licks. As I'm tuning up for the third exercise concept I want to show you today, allow me to give you a quick mission update. As you know, we want to take guitar to the top of the YouTube charts in Austria together. Great news, we gained four places over the last weeks and moved to spot 86 now. So continue subscribing and spreading the message. We are really making a difference right here and I think we can actually pull this off. So the third and most challenging exercise is all about involving the fretting hand some more, about switching between fast downstrokes and alternate picking, and I also added some of the most challenging note values in there, of course the fast 16th notes, but also quarter note triplets. You will see they aren't exactly fast, but it's really hard to get them right with perfect timing. So this one is quite tricky and I would suggest spending some time with exercises 1 and 2 before you tackle this third one. Of course you can also start by isolating each group before you start combining them. Just like with this extra practice video that I made for you on Patreon. But obviously the biggest goal is really focusing on switching between those different groups. As I said, you don't want to drag or rush after those transitions and in my personal opinion that's the most important skill you can have as a rhythm guitar player. So to give you even more value at the end of this video I have three additional practice tips when it comes to timing and rhythm in your practice routine. First tip, you can and should experiment with the metronome. You don't always have to start your workouts and exercises on the one. Try starting on the two or four for example next time for an even more challenging timing twist with your workouts. A lot of really good drummers are working this way and it's a lot of fun to do it. Second tip, experiment with playing laid back or with rushing just a little bit intentionally. If your notes are consistently laid back or if you're rushing slightly in a consistent way. You can create really cool timing effects in your music, especially when you communicate this with your band members, but this only works if you're consistently playing in front of the beat or behind the beat. And the third and probably most important tip, record yourself in your favorite DAW, like Cubis for example, and closely analyze your practice files to see when you're unintentionally rushing or dragging. I for example found out that I like to start tricky and very fast sections a bit too early and learning that about myself a couple of years ago really helped with improving and with becoming more consistent. So let me know in the comments which one of those three quick tips was the most interesting one for you, because I would love to make more videos about timing and rhythm and there's still so much left to say. And of course at the end I have another not so random German word for you, Rhythmus. That is quite obviously our word for rhythm, so make sure to share this one in the comments below to confuse our new watchers or the guys and girls who are not watching these videos until the end. And I will see you again in the next video, I hope you have tons of fun working on this. 
great news my friends, I'm finally on Spotify to provide you with some awesome guitar music and shredding. You can already listen to my first full length album Elevation. And there's plenty more exciting music in the making for you right now. So make sure to follow me on Spotify today, the link is in the description or you can just search for my name. <laughs>